Today on Geekawatt, a $150 phone with dual cameras, dual flash, a fingerprint sensor, a 4000 mAh battery, dual SIM with micro SD card expansion, and a 1080p 5.5 inch display. But is it actually any good? Let's kick it off with a physical overview. On the back we have our Sony camera, this is an IMX328 Exmor R sensor, and that doesn't really mean much. It goes up to ISO 1600, and is one of the weaker points of this phone. Not to say the camera isn't good, uh, but I feel it is surpassed by my OnePlus One, which has been out a couple of years now. Not to say it is uh, bad, for example, but it is okay, providing you have good lighting and you're outdoors. Uh, that dual flash should help for low light situations, however, it does start to get quite noisy, regardless of how much flash you put on it uh, at night time. If we move down we have the UMI logo uh, and UMI are actually quite a big phone manufacturer and then the touch logo which is of course the name of the phone, the UMI Touch 4G. Next we get a, a hint as to why this phone is so cheap. It says designed and manufactured in China. UMI are actually quite a large seller of phones in China and this unit was provided to me by Chinese wholesaler Gearbest. Now they have loads of good deals on a load of different stuff including this phone and I'll leave links at wherever you are in the world to pick this up in the description below if you would like to do so. If we go on to the top we have our headphone jack, I'm looking at UI Phone 7 and on the bottom we have our micro USB uh, charging port. This is a micro USB 2 port and does allow for a data transfer of course for putting music and that kind of thing on this phone. Taking a look inside we have an octa-core ARM Cortex A53. Now you will notice that more expensive phones will use uh, CPUs from the likes of Snapdragon. However, because this is a Chinese phone it's going to be using a Chinese CPU which is ultimately a little bit cheaper. We also have a 4000 mAh battery in here which is one of the biggest phone batteries I've ever seen. It adds a little bit of heft to the phone I must say, however uh, phones these days are getting lighter and lighter and I don't see the need. Once it's in your pocket you kind of forget it's there anyway and 4000 mAh is a perfect amount for me. It will guarantee you all day use. You get plenty of phones with 3000 mAh batteries claiming all day use but as soon as you watch a few YouTube videos on them, send a couple of tweets and open Snapchat more than once, you are completely stuffed when it comes to battery. In terms of GPU, we have the ARM Mali T720, uh, the same brand that produced the CPU, and it is just a little bit of a cheaper unit. It's very, very capable of simulator games and mobile games. You're not really having any trouble there. However, it isn't the best kind of GPU in the world, but it is in a phone, and there's nothing too much to worry about. Next, we also see uh, the slightly cheaper side. We've got LP DDR3 RAM as opposed to the LP DDR4 used in the Galaxy Note 7. However, uh, that is a flagship phone, and DDR3 is used in most devices, such as this OnePlus One or uh, the Galaxy S5 for example, uh, so having DDR3 isn't really too much of a major burden, it is just a slight generation behind the latest releases from the likes of Crucial and, and the memory manufacturers. Now what about that dual SIM and micro SD that you touched upon? By default this phone comes with 16GB of onboard storage, uh, once again showing that kind of cheaper side, but you can't complain because you have a micro SD expansion slot. Now once you remove the SIM tray, you actually have options for either two SIMs, so you could use one SIM for your calls and your text and another for your data or you can have one SIM for your contract with calls, data, text, all that sort of stuff on and the other SIM card slot uh, could be taken up by a micro SD card and that's going to allow that extra expansion. You can't have two SIMs and a micro SD card in here unfortunately but that just seems a little bit greedy to me. In my opinion I would see this phone more as a single SIM phone with a micro SD card slot. However if you're the type of person who wants to use a business phone and a personal phone combining them into one and can take the sacrifice of 16 gigs of onboard storage, then this might actually be the perfect solution for you. Moving to the front of the phone, we have a 1920 by 1080 at 5.5 inch panel, which has a pixel density of 401 pixels per inches, which is great. I love the 5.5 inch screen form factor, and 1080p is a great compromise between uh, battery life and also the resolution and performance of your screen and how it looks. Uh, the higher the resolution goes, the more battery life you're going to suck out, and we want to keep as much as that 4000 milliamp hour battery as possible. The screen is the biggest takeaway from battery life, so why try and cram more pixels in here when it looks perfectly good enough? as it is. Uh, on the sides we have our volume up and down as well as a lock button and then on the left hand side is completely bare aside from our SIM tray which can be ejected with a tool included in the box. Talking briefly of the box, the packaging is cheap, it's like kind of like this papery cardboard, it's very very thin, however it does the job and you're not going to be carrying your packaging around with you. On the bottom we have a fingerprint sensor which is 
very, very reliable. Uh, one nifty trick that I found was to register my thumb twice uh, in different areas. So when you register it the first time, kind of focus more on the left side of your thumb. And when you register it the second time, you can have multiple fingerprints. That's how I've done this. Is it use uh, other areas of your thumb to increase the reliability of the, uh, the fingerprint reader. It is very, very good though and touch sensitive. We also have capacitive buttons on either side to go back and also select uh, switching between apps and close down existing open apps and all that kind of stuff. The front camera is only a Hynix sensor so it isn't quite as good but that front flash is a nice addition and it would be good to see more phones do this. How many of those photos that you see on Instagram are actually selfies from the front facing camera and aren't very well lit? quite a lot of them, uh, so this front facing flash is actually going to be quite a nice gimmick if you will uh, in real life usage and I'll leave some cringeworthy selfie examples in both low light and good light on your screen now. But that's enough of me talking off the spec sheet, what do I think of the phone? For $150 it is incredible value, it's absolutely unbelievable. I can see why this phone is so popular in China and if I have any Chinese viewers watching, hello, I'm sorry I can't speak Chinese but I can see why this phone is so popular with many people in your country. It's a great, great phone. The price is just unbelievable for me. If you have a, a, a rolling contract for two years uh, with a SIM only for $15, once you've added the price of the phone on uh, per month, you're looking at like $18 a month for a phone of this caliber, where an iPhone 7, a uh, Galaxy uh, Note 7, Galaxy uh, S7, S7 Edge can demand between $30 and $70, between 40 and 60 pounds in the UK. And that's just absurd for a phone that does the job just as well. It comes with Android 6.0 pre-installed, which is great because it means that it's not uh, it's not going to lag the more you update it. You're on Android 6.0, one of Android's latest releases. 7.0 has just come out. However, the, uh, the changes are kind of very, very small and only incremental. It's a, an incredible incredibly cheap phone and I just cannot get over how, how how cheap it actually is compared to how it performs. You've got a full range of all the apps on the Play Store here as well, meaning any iOS apps that you have on your iPhone or you have on your Galaxy Note 6 uh, or Note 7, the chances are you'll be able to get them on this phone no problem which to me is just incredible. It's great to see how far phones have come for budget price points and the addition of dual SIM with expandable storage is absurd for the price. But if you do enjoy this video, you know what to do. I'll leave links to gearbest.com who are kind enough to supply this phone to me. They've also supplied to me uh, different things before like action cameras and I'll leave links to all the stuff that I've done before for them in the card section on the right hand side of your screen now. But if you did enjoy this video, you know what to do. Please do drop a like rate and subscribe. It really does help me out. Leave any comments, suggestions, queries, comments in the comments section below. Hit me up on Twitter at GeekerWatt. But as always, we'll see you in the next GeekerWatt video.